and this is burning. The pattern into the top. Just about finished up now. It could be a little bit more efficient in how it's doing this, but uh, for now it's fine. So I took all the tape off already and it looks pretty good. Uh, I'm pretty well impressed. This is the first time I did some deep ones. Now I am getting a little bit of issues here. I've noticed there's a ridge here as if it didn't quite make it and then there's a little ridge over here. So I'm not sure if that's an accuracy issue with the belt or a software issue with Lightburn. I'm using Lightburn version 7.04 on this. And there's a little bit here. Now if I go across, it looks like it's the same line. And not only that, it almost looks like the change is there uh, between one and the other. This end looks a little bit deeper. So, but overall, this is good. I'm, I'm pretty impressed with it. It took a little bit longer than I thought. And uh, I probably went a little bit deeper than I really needed to, so maybe next time I'll do a little bit less. So now I'm going to go ahead and try to do some of these inlays and see what happens. Okay, well, during the time that we were out, um, I was trying to investigate these lines. You know what they are? That's where two pieces of masking tape overlapped. So you would think that that attenuation would not be enough to cause that. But if you look at it, these lines here correspond 100% with the uh, masking tape lines. I thought that was kind of interesting. So before I start gluing up everything, I already got all my other stuff cut. I'm going to take just a regular toothbrush and I'm going to scrub the insides just to remove any charcoal that's in there because I want the glue that I'm going to be using to adhere and stick. So once I clean it out, I'm going to go back in and just chip away these little things that I talked about for the overlap. I'll just get rid of those with a little chisel that I have and then we'll come back and we'll do some uh, gluing of these pieces and see what happens. Okay, I did a little bit of cleanup and it's enough. Okay, so we're going to start off by applying just a little bit of glue. And I'm using Type Bond, that's what I like to use. And you got to have it open. If you don't have it open, the glue's not coming out. Put a little bit in. Okay, now this is a tool I got from Rockler and it's a glue spreader and it works pretty good. Um, it, eventually it'll build up. Make sure you get the glue on the sides just as well as you do on the, in the back. And actually it's probably more important that you get it on the sides than you do on the back because uh, what happens is you get some good adhesion and you won't get too, as many cracks. Now, while I'm doing this, a lot of people don't know this, but I like to do a softer piece for the top and then use harder insets. It just works out a little bit better. But at this time, I used American Holly. And American Holly, is, though it's a very expensive wood, is extremely soft. So we'll see what happens here when we try to push all this stuff in. All right, so it looks like it's going to go in okay. So I push it in, and yes, it does look 
like it's going in all right just make sure that you have the right side up okay and once it's all in you just tamp it down a little bit Now it's going to be proud and I know that so when I do my final sanding that's going to be flush and everything should be okay. It also helps to make sure you get all the glue out a little bit ahead of time. Alright so then we'll go with the next smaller piece and we'll put a little bit of glue in there. Now don't be too overly gluing because if you do that just that's more problems almost than it's worth. So we're going to spread that around in here. Make sure that that's all even on the sides. And then start spreading it around to other places. Here we put a little bit more in here. And these are a little bit smaller pieces. And I decided to use walnut for, for this. So we'll see how that looks when it's done. But for now, we we'll just put these walnut pieces in. And make sure again that you got the right direction. And one more piece here. Okay, now we can do this next set. And I still got the tape on this one, that's interesting. Okay, push that in. Push it in. No, I don't want that, that's right. That's not supposed to be the color. The color I want is this color. So let me just refresh a little bit of the glue. I wasn't sure how I wanted that, but now that I look at it, I think it's going to look better with two pieces of holly and then uh, two pieces of balanced out walnut. So I think that should look a little bit better. So we'll see how that looks. So we'll put these down here and do that one. Okay, so now we got that in place again. We tap it down. Okay. Now it depends on the thickness. Some are going to go in a little bit better than others. I don't like that one. Not a good. Well, we'll just see what that comes out with tomorrow. Okay, and then finally we got this little small one that we're dealing with over here. And let's see what we can do with that. So, I'm going to put walnut in this one. And yeah, that's a lot of glue, so we'll, we'll get rid of some of that. If you put too much glue in, it's going to float like this one did, and that's not a good idea. Floating is not good. Put that piece in. That piece in. That piece. And that piece. Now, I can see that there's going to be a little bit of a problem. See, I knew it was going to be a little bit of a problem. It's not a very good fit on that one. But, we'll let it go. Okay, for a cleanup, just you know, we don't want too much glue left over because remember, you got to sand everything down. So getting rid of stuff ahead of time is better than waiting. So I just use a paper towel, 
it's wet a little bit and rub out my to some extent that's all you gotta do the rest you can just sand out okay so we'll come back in a few hours usually you can wait about three hours or so while everything sets up and then we can go ahead and, and sand that down yeah, I think it's going to look pretty decent for the first try. Okay, now we're going to do a little bit of sanding. Okay, so I'm going to spare I'm going to spare you all the uh, the noise of the sanding, but here's the inlays, and the inlay is not bad. It's not great, and I'll probably uh, I'm very critical of my inlays. Um, it looks like they fit perfect. Um, there's a little bit of line lineage here that I can see at the end and that could be my kerf. So I'm going to go ahead and finish sanding this thing down and then I'll get back when uh, this whole thing gets uh, sanded down, okay? Well, we went ahead and uh, sanded it down. I started off with an 80 grit then I went to 120 then I went to 220, 320, and finally I finished it off with 400. So it's pretty, uh, pretty interesting right now. I think it looks good. So in order to see how it's going to finish up before I put any more on here, I'm going to use some mineral spirits and we wipe it down. And this will tell me a lot about the wood. So. That looks pretty good. I think that looks very nice. And I hope you can see it for yourself. Turned out really good. This is very, very, very nice. So, yeah, I think uh, I think I might be doing some more, more complicated inlays. This is pretty complicated because it has a curve and a very sharp point. And that's one thing you can't do on a CNC. The sharp points just would not come out. So once I got this, I mean, I'm not mastering it. I still, still got a few more things I got to learn about it. But I do have a ton of uh, drawings I made. And uh, I'm going to finish this box up. I'll probably do some flowers on the side. I still got to do a round over and then oil. But um, since that's not the purpose, we're done. If you have any questions, send me an email.